Hey everybody, welcome to another YouTube Live with me, the Acrylic Diva. It's Wednesday in San Francisco and it's noon, so it must be YouTube Live. Today we're going to talk about crackle paste. I'm pretty excited about this because it's a wonderful product that Golden makes. It's very um, user friendly if you pay attention to what you're doing, which I'm going to talk about today. And you can get some beautiful, beautiful surfaces with this particular paste it does some very cool stuff so let me show you a bottle or a, a jar of what it looks like this is crackle paste and today we're going to talk about its properties and what it does and what different ways to use it and I'm going to show you a little demo with it um, first let's take a look at a panel that I have prepped this is crackle paste on a panel and one of the applications that you want to be sure that you're paying attention to or one of the properties rather is you want to make sure that when you're using crackle paste you're using it on a stable support so this is a panel a wooden panel and that is my preferred uh, surface for using crackle paste for the simple reason that crackle paste will uh, tend to crack more and not adhere as well to a flexible support like canvas so I rarely use it on canvas I almost always use it on panel so let me do a quick little uh, demo with it and uh, show you what I mean. We're going to make a surface that looks a lot like an old um, Italian wall or uh, you know an old distressed surface something like that. Hey man like man I see you there welcome welcome to the broadcast. Um, yeah we have new labels at Golden how about that. Uh, so what I'm going to do, like I said, I have put the crackle paste down on a panel. Now I want to show this up to the camera a little bit. I'm going to get it kind of close. I hope it stays in focus. You're going to see some very, very small cracks. The way to apply this so that you get a variety of cracks is that when you apply it thicker like this, you will get big thick cracks. And you can even see here, I lost a little piece right there. This panel's been banging around the studio for a while, so I'm not surprised that a piece is gone. You can always glue something back in there, like a little molding paste or something. But um, I'll talk about top coats here in a minute. But when you put it down thick like this, you're going to get big, thick cracks. When you put it down a little thinner, like I've done up here, you're going to get very fine cracks. Now, sometimes people will come into the studio or they'll be working with crackle paste and they'll go, oh, I didn't get any cracks at all. And basically what you have to do is you have to put down some sort of color so that you can actually see those really, really fine cracks. Sometimes you won't even see them until, until you've got color down. So don't give up. If you've put crackle paste down and you don't think you have any cracks, put some color down on top of it and I'll bet you they're there. They usually are. All right. Um, hey, Frida, how you doing? All right. David from Flax Demos. I love it. I love it. If only you were here in person, David. <laughs> I could use another set of hands, let me tell you. Um, okay. So the main thing to remember with crackle paste, a couple of things. First of all, use it on a stable support. Second of all, it's absorbent. So it works great with water mixed into the paint. You can do that. But it also works really great with glazing liquid. See my bottle of glazing liquid that's got fingerprints all over it? Can you read that? <laughs> Hi, Mary Oliver. It's good to see you. Um, I, can, I can see you, your, your name. <laughs> you guys can't see my face just yet. Um, yeah, so here's my glazing liquid with fingerprints all over it. I'll pop in here so you can, I'm going to say howdy. Howdy, howdy guys. <laughs> I'm rocking and rolling over here. So I'm going to go back to the overhead camera. Um, click the overhead camera. There we go. All right. So glazing liquid for the process that we're going to do today, the glazing liquid is going to be really important because what it does is it gives you time to work on the 
paint and pull some paint back off of the surface and stuff. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. But um, I like to use it. I'm not going to be using any water at all today. Rarely do I mix water and glazing liquid. They don't usually like to play with each other. So bear that in mind. And that'll be a topic for another, another broadcast. But today we're going to use glazing liquid to keep the paint wet long enough for us to do some stuff to it. So let's get started on that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mixture of Jenkins Green and Quinacridone Crimson. I'm going to make kind of a black. Now why am I just, why not just use black? Well, because I like to make my own black, because I'm particular about my black, and I don't want just generic black. So I hope y'all can see in my camera um, these two very beautiful colors, Jenkins Green and Quinacridone, I mean, excuse me, yeah, Quinacridone Crimson is what I've got. I thought I had Alizarin Crimson, just a minute. Let me see. No, I've got Quinacridone Crimson, that's fine. Um, Alizarin Crimson is really good too. It, it's a little bit browner. Quinacridone Crimson is good for this mixture. You want to make a nice, rich black. It's going to be... It's going to be somewhere between a burnt umber and a black. So here's my Jenkins green. Gosh, that's gorgeous, isn't it? Look how pretty that is. I'm going to scrub it out so you can see some of the undertone. Ah, oh, I love me some Jenkins green. By the way, this was a custom color that was created for Paul Jenkins. And it was so popular that Golden ended up putting it in the product line. So there you go. Um, and now I'm going to take a little bit of my quinacridone crimson and I'm going to mix it in. See, look at that. I am just get the most gorgeous color here. So I can really push this from a burnt umber to a kind of a dark blackish brown, you know, and I get a lot more control when I do this than if I were just using carbon black or bone black out of the out of the uh, bottle. Let me put that out. I'm going to put a little tiny bit of glazing liquid out on my plate and I want to take a little bit of this color that I made and I'm going to put it out on this white paper towel so you can really see how nice that is as a as a black that is my own black. That's Tisa Blackburn black. <laughs> So, you know, just FYI, those two colors, uh, Quinacridone Crimson, Alizarin Crimson Hue will work as well, and Jenkins Green make just the most yummy black, and you can really push it. Um, you can green it up, you know, a little bit if you want. Throw a little bit more Quin Crimson in there. Brown it down a little bit. Have a good time with it, okay? Because it's a gorgeous color. It's a gorgeous mixture. All right. Let's take that, a little bit of that, and some glazing liquid, and I'm going to need a bigger brush. So got my panel with my crackle paste on it, and I'm going to get a bigger brush, and I probably didn't make enough black. Let me make some more black. Let me get serious about this, you guys. Okay, here's my green, my Jenkins green, and I'm throwing my Quinn crimson in there and that's just so gorgeous I can hardly stand it <laughs> it's like you have so much control over black when you do this I love it okay that should be enough now I'm gonna put some more glazing liquid out you can never have too much glazing liquid right and I'm going to grab my glazing liquid on my brush, like so. Grab my gorgeous black. And I'm just going to throw it down on my crackle paste. Let's get some more of that stuff. And you can see I'm not being really fussy about the color. What I really want here is contrast. I'm looking for contrast. So let's make some more of that. I'm going to just get some more glazing liquid. 
I do love glazing liquid. And just let's just mix them right here. That might be a little bit too red, so let's throw a little bit more Jenkins in there. And we'll just mix them with the big brush to save time. There. Okay. So see, I've just got a dark that's really, it's not black, it's not green, it's not crimson, it's all of those things. And see, I just lost a little piece of my crackle paste right there. So you want to be careful. Um, even on this stable support that I have it on, you if, you know, if you're too, not careful, and like this little panel that I'm working on has been banging around in the studio, in the back of my car, and all kinds of stuff. It's a wonder it still has any crackle paste at all on it. Um, but just be careful with the surface. So once you get that down, you can then take a paper towel and just wipe it back. If I don't knock it off the table first. So see that? Just wipe it back. You're basically painting down that whole surface and then taking all the paint away. And look at that. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh, I love it. Love, love, love it. And I'm just wiping this off with a dry paper towel. Okay. That's basically how hard that is. Now look at the surface of that. Isn't that gorgeous? Yum, yum, yum. We could do that all day, right? Now say for instance you want to create kind of a nice old world Tuscan kind of uh, feeling, you know, like warm old Italian crumbling wall. I'm going to take a little Indian yellow hue, more glazing liquid, more glazing liquid, bartender, <laughs> and I'm going to put a little Italian, uh, Italian, listen to me, Indian yellow hue, a little bit of that out. This time, uh-oh, you guys, I started this, I was out of town, I was up in Chico, hanging out with Mary Oliver. Um... I was up in Chico and I've just got back to the studio here, the video studio, so I'm a little uh, at odds here. So bear with me if I drop things. Anyway, I'm using a fancy paint applicator here. This is a paper towel. And I'm going to put that Indian yellow in and I'm just going to scrub it right into that surface. Now, the um, glazing liquid that I have in the Indian Yellow here is going to act almost like an eraser. And so you definitely don't want to um, overdo it because you can pick up everything that's in the layer below. And I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. But what, I'm, what I want to do is I want to warm up that background a little bit and then I want to have a little bit more contrast. So I'm putting down the Indian yellow mixture with the glazing liquid right into that wet mixture that I did a minute ago. Now I'll take a paper towel, cleanish paper towel, and because I've got that wet glazing liquid on here, I can come back and pull up some areas if I want to have some areas a little brighter. Like say for instance you were going to do something in the middle of the panel and you wanted it to be a little bit brighter. I'm even going to take a little bit of glazing liquid on my paper towel just right out of the bottle. And watch this. See that? I can just take that glazing liquid and pull up quite a bit of what I've done already, as long as it's still wet. So say for instance I thought, well, you know, that uh, Jenkins Green Quinn mixture was just a little bit too heavy. I'm going to pull some of that up. 
and I'm going to just put a drop or two of the Indian yellow hue down without any glazing liquid and just kind of rub it in. See how much more saturated it is now? It's quite a bit more saturated. Put a drop over here and I'm just being really uh, kind of stingy with the paint if you will. I'm trying not to overdo it. You don't want to try to opacify the background. Just drop at a time. It takes very little paint to do this. The main thing you're using here is glazing liquid. So we're just using that Indian yellow to kind of warm up the background. We first put it down with the glazing liquid mixed in and then pulled it off. It's like why put it down and then pull it off? Well you know I've tried it many ways and this is the best way to do it trust me. So now I've got um, my surface which is pretty yummy but I'm going to come back to my super yummy mixture that I made with the Jenkins and the uh, Quinn Crimson. And I'm just going to grab a tiny bit of that on my paper towel and I'm just going to darken some areas you know just a little bit to give it a little bit of contrast. Now I'm working on top of these layers without letting them dry. If you let them dry you will get a lot of um, hard lines and things. So make sure that you're doing this and uh, not letting things dry too much. Now you could let the whole thing dry and come back the following day and start all over as long as you don't have too much paint down and it's not been uh, too heavy. As long as the surface of that uh, crackle paste is still open and will take the paint then you can keep working on it. But I really recommend super thin layers, super super thin layers and just gently add that color. Don't go crazy. Don't get crazy y'all. <laughs> Don't go crazy. Alright so that is basically a little overview on crackle paste. Just a brief little demo on it there. You can do tons of fun stuff but can you imagine what kind of wonderful imagery you could do on top of that? You can do some really beautiful things. Now when it comes to saving the surface after you've finished painting um, you can put a top coat over the whole thing with polymer medium with gloss medium and gloss medium will keep it absolutely clear so you won't um, get any kind of cloudiness or anything. I always recommend gloss medium as the top coat over anything like this because then you won't get any kind of matte look or anything. The gloss medium will also help to make sure you don't lose any little bits of uh, crackle paste but uh, if you want to be really sure that you're not going to lose crackle paste use a heavy gel or a um, you could even use tar gel as a cover over everything as your top coat and I believe that there is a video on this YouTube channel that has instructions on how to do a top coat with tar gel so and I'm gonna revisit that soon because that video needs to be redone but there you go that's just a real brief little uh, overview I want to take a look at the chat box and see um, if anybody has questions for me, um, let me just get myself organized here so I don't end up putting my elbow in the paint, <laughs> which definitely will happen, you guys. You guys know me. I'll put my elbow in the paint. Hi. <laughs> All right. I've got my chat box in front of me so I can see what's going on. And it looks like, hey, Mary Oliver. Yes, well, I miss, I miss Chico, too. I miss you guys up there. It's beautiful up there. Um, and I had such a good time. You guys are such great hosts up there. I love it. Um, so Mary wants to know, is it fluid paint? Yes, it is fluid paint. I definitely recommend fluid paint for this process because if you were going to do this with heavy body paint, you would have to mix it down so much 
it's really frustrating. So these little one ounce um, bottles of fluid are just amazing for that, you know, and that's easy. So fluid paint for sure. Um, is it glaze? The glaze is the glazing liquid. And you know what? Let me put the lid on this before I start throwing stuff around. Um, I can just see the, the mat getting covered in glazing liquid. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. Okay, so here's the glazing liquid. Oops, let me turn it so you can see it. I don't know if you can read it with my fingerprints. Um, so that's glazing liquid. I use gloss because that's the clearest, but um, you can also get it in satin if you want something with a little bit less gloss. But, you know, the idea here is that you've got the fluid paint and you've got the glazing liquid and the ratio is whatever you want it to be. So you could have 90% um, glazing liquid and 10% uh, fluid paint or you could have 90% fluid paint and 10% glazing liquid, whatever you want to do. But I recommend, especially for something like the, let's go back and look at the overhead here if I can get things organized so you can see. Um, I recommend that you err on the side of caution when you're using the paint uh, in situations like this with uh, the crackle paste. For the main reason is that these doggone um, paints are so heavily pigmented and you guys know I'm talking about golden. Now if you're, if you're using another type of paint, I don't know what your results will be. Um, so I always recommend to do color charts like mix this with 90% glazing liquid and then make a swatch on white paper and then mix this with 50% glazing liquid and make a swatch and so on. Make yourself a color chart so that you know whenever you start to use a color from another brand or a, or a different type of color, you'll know what's going to happen. And uh, I, have, phew, I have hundreds of those doggone charts that I make all the time um, because it, it will keep you from being frustrated with mixing and stuff like that. And it'll also save you money because if 90% glazing liquid is going to do the job and one drop of paint, then why use half a tube of paint? You know what I'm saying? So pay attention to that, you guys, okay? And uh, Dennis, I'll send you some paint. In the meantime, if you have any questions, just let me know. Drop me a line. And what do I always say? Keep painting. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.